Here you go, bro. Ooh, thank you. No worries, dude. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Well, Shay, thank you for being here, bro. It's been 10 years since you started Day Show. You know, three albums and some singles later. Yeah, yeah. How's it felt? Feels good. I mean, statistically speaking, bands only last five years. And that's with a team of members. And I think, statistically speaking, pretty much Deshell, the, the band version of Deshell with members was only about five years. Towards the tail end of the last year, I was just getting whatever member I could to play, you know, so that statistic is real. But the fact that I don't want to give up, yeah. I've been writing most of probably 90% of all the music I've released in my lifetime from the past to now. So it's like, well, why don't I, why don't I just take it into my own hands and yeah. continue it? Like what, what's the big difference other than, yeah, I got to put in some more work, but you know, Deshell isn't just the band to me. This is my way of life. This is the closest thing I can get to happiness and just solace, I guess you could say. So the 10 years is just the beginning to me. I'm not like, damn, it's been I mean, yeah, of course, a part of me is like, damn, it's been 10 years, but at the same time, I like, no, I'm just getting started. That was all preparation. That was all my 20s. Now I'm in my 30s, so now let's get serious, you know? Well, heck yeah. For those who don't know, you're campaigning right now for your fourth record. Yeah, yeah. For um, Pegasus. This will be your second album as an independent artist. You and I talk all the time, but you know, it just doesn't do it justice comparatively to when you're in front of me. Like, how has that been for you? Where has your head at been with all of that? Just nerves, nervous, dude. Like, I don't know, you know, that's the thing. You know, when you launch something like this where you're asking your audience and your fan base to, to donate their hard earned money to believe, right. they believe enough to donate to your campaign, your GoFundMe to make this album happen. You know, you sit there, you don't know your, it's almost like a, you don't know your worth and you're kind of just waiting, you know? I try not to look at it that way. I try not to look like, oh, so if I only make $20,000 for my $50,000 campaign, then that's all I'm worth. But, you know, the whole time I'm just sitting here, yeah, watching numbers slowly go up, wondering, you know, like, can I do with this album? Because $50,000, I have it planned out. I know what, what I can do, what I can't do, but $20,000, I don't have a plan for that one. $30,000, don't have a plan. 40, I can squeeze a plan in. So if we do end up peaking at like 30 or 25 or something, like then I have to rethink and you know, things are gonna change. So there's a lot of worry in there, but just nail biting and, and hoping, you know, hoping that we get as close as I can to this goal so I can do the most advanced Deshaun album to date, the best. Yeah, well, and it's funny, you and I talk about this all the time. There are a lot of ins and outs that people, fan base or not, just don't see that come with being an independent artist. If I can't stress enough one thing, it's the fact that you're an independent artist. This is your second album that you've done independently as a one-man band. You know, that said, what are some challenges that you've dealt with, you know, in the more recent years between Mr. Payne and now this album? I mean, there is one that weighs on me the heaviest, but you know, you got the challenge of, you know, you're an independent artist, so financially you have to support everything that you do on your own. You know, I'm launching a GoFundMe because I can't afford to do a full album on my own. You know, it's hard to write the music. It's hard to facilitate the ideas. You know, it's hard to constantly be in a position where you have to stay focused right. and work when you can't fall down because nobody's going to pick you up. Right. You don't got a guy on, on your band that's going to take that weight off of you whenever you fall down. Uh, so that's hard. But I think the, the hardest thing, at least as recent in this situation we're at with this new album is referring back to the last thing you asked me, but it, it, the toughest part is just wondering what exactly Deshell can afford to do. Like, where's this campaign? How much money are we gonna raise? The money that we raise determines what I can do. And the more money we get, the better this release is. And none, not a penny of this is going in my pocket for, for pleasure right. purposes. Like, it's not like that. Everything's going into a savings account. In fact, even some of my own personal money will be going in this batch. But it's all designed and planned out, you know, ideally 30K for the album and 20K for all the marketing right. and fees and all that stuff. Um, but in retrospect, you know, doing this album and thinking big, bigger than Mr. Payne, bigger right. than anything I've ever done, you know, 20K just isn't enough. I mean, if right. we got 30K, we're in a position where we gotta either cut some deals or potentially think different. We might not be able to do a full album. You know, I don't want to. My goal is to do an album. I right. want to do an album because I feel like times are changing and albums are eventually gonna become obsolete. It's not beneficial for artists to spend all that money to release 10 songs and only have three singles that get any light and success. And then you wasted seven songs on your album are just not being, they're, yeah. they're getting an eighth of the plays that your right. singles would be getting. So it's just not logical anymore. So I really want to do this album and we're going to do it. That's the goal. But 
you know, it all depends, you know, that's, that's what bothers me the most. That's what weighs on me the most and unders- uninspires me because I'm worried of the unknown. Yeah. I don't know. I need to know. And that's killing me inside. I talk about my friends every day. I'm just, they keep asking me, so how's it going? How's the campaign? I'm like, would you stop reminding me? Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, it's going, go look at it, go click on it. Right. Okay. Like we're just waiting to hopefully get closer to the goal, dude. Like, you know, I can't plan shit yet talking to people, but I cannot plan it out yet until I know exactly how much I can afford to do the album. You know, that's the first step is who's recording it and how much. And then all the funds after that, we can figure out later. But yeah, that's where I'm at. There are just so many things that people don't see behind closed doors that you're basically given this ultimatum almost like, and it's not necessarily guaranteed that it works out in your favor as an artist. Cause at the end of the day, you're the one putting in the work. You're the one that's putting your name on the line and your career on the line. You can either be a sellout to a company and I'm saying that graciously where you sign to a label and you know, you get an advance and then you have to pay that back. And then, you know, you pretty much whatever you get left is enough to buy you ramen for the week. Yeah. Basically. Or you do what you're doing and you jump through all of the hoops yourself, carry all of the weight yourself. And that can, and sometimes does have an effect on your well being. It has an effect on your ability to create your ability to deliver in this case, Pegasus. I can only imagine like how the day to day is for you. Like it's pretty up and down. That's the coin I always toss, you know, it's like, okay, well, if I sign to a label right now, sure, I could get a little bit of financial support. You know, the risk is, you know, that's why I'm not signing to a label anytime soon, at least right now. Not that I'm opposed to labels. It's just what I, the label, the kind of labels that contact me, it's my, you might as well just bend me over and slap me in my butt as hard as you can. Right. <laughs> Cause like, that's basically what it is. Yeah. yeah there's that. I mean, I don't know how the, the, the record deals work with now. Like, I mean, my last record deal was in 2015. So. For me, it's just, you know, it's the fear because you signed a label, they're all gonna tell you, like, they're all gonna sweet, whisper sweet nothings in, the ear, in your ear, and then you right. sign to them, and you write, you write the best album you can, and then they just don't market it. They mm-hmm. don't care. And then you're not making money because they're not doing their job, they're not making money, so then they go, they lose faith in the band, and then two years later, they finally drop you, and for two years, you've been wondering what the hell's going on with your life, and you can't do anything because it's right. up to them. They, they're the key holders, so, you know, that's where I'm at. Like, I make a decent, I, I make like a minimum wage type of living right now, pay my bills. I'm able to buy the things that I need, the small things I need to continue to might write my music, and right. I'm content. I can't say that when I was ever on a label, right. ever. The moment I went independent was the instant I started getting making money. So there's that, and that's why. Like, I've gotten a little comfortable here. I'm afraid to lose that, because I can sign a label and I lose my house and everything. Right. They'll give me a nice little chunk to record an album, but then I have to pay that back, and then they're gonna take 80% of all my income after that. Right. So I'll be making no money for the next 10 years. So the idea is, you know, maybe, maybe we can do this album, record it, and shop it. Maybe we can get a label that goes, well, I already took care of the record budget, so why don't you give me all the money you would have you would have given me to record an album and I could just pocket it all and live. Right. And that'd make me feel good. I'd have $30,000, whatever to live off of for the next, for the year. You right. Know? Like absolutely. that'd be nice, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, let me ask you this, you know, as an independent artist, you know, as someone that started Day Shell 10 years ago, you know, obviously there's been a progression as an artist, a progression in your sound. What is your goal with this record? What is it that you're trying to tell your fans that have rocked with you all of these years? the people that just started listening to your music and even to those that go out of their way to oppose your music, you as an artist, you as a person. What is it you're trying to say with this record? Multiple things I guess I'm trying to say. Um, You know, the idea though for Operation Pegasus is just to make the best album I've ever done. You know, coming from where I came from, you know, sobering up five years ago now. Oh my God, I'm five years sober. So five years ago I got sober up until now, like it took me a while to get my health a little bit in order, you know, lose weight, get healthy, get that focus back because, you know, alcohol yep. took that from me. You know, even when I did Mr. Pain, I mean, just because I quit alcohol and I was, I was sober now, it, it didn't mean that I was fixed. I mean, right. I mean, my mind was crazy, you know, I was yeah. still like trying to process all these emotions I suppressed and it, it was difficult. And I just wanted, to me, I looked at that album as it being my last album ever, you know, right. Mr. Pain was like, this could potentially be it because like, who's going to care about Day Shell after this? After like, this yeah. Uh, but I did it and we, sm- we smashed it and it was a good album. But this album now, I want, I just want to make them more proud than ever. Like seeing yeah. me, I mean, the people that have rocked with me since of Mice and Men or even prior, like they've seen right. me, like ups seen and downs. me hit the, they've seen me hit the rock bottom and they've seen me slowly climb. And now I'm, I'm getting higher than I've ever been before. So I just really, 
really want to make them proud and I want to show them what I'm really, really, really capable of in the clear mind that I am now. Right. Not, the sh not the foggy mind from just being a recent alcoholic, but an actual recovered alcoholic or recovering. I guess we never recover, but let's just say like I've had enough time to really find myself again and get into my skin without any substance, you know, so this version of Shay, clear headed, sober, determined Shay, what can we get out of him? And, and I kind of look at this album too as like my last album too. Not in a sense my last album, my last thing on Day Shell to release music, but again, going back to what we said about the albums being something that might be a thing in the past now because right. of the way the world's turning. Like, yeah, this might be my last album in full. So I want to do this as best I can. I mean, I got ideas up, up the wazoo. Like I, uh, you know, it's all, you know, I've talked to you about it and stuff yeah. like this whole operation. I. The theme, like I would love to make these videos and all these ideas and visions I have that correlate with my music. Like I would right. love to explore these things. I mean, if I could take this as far as I can, I can show you guys what I'm capable of aside from music. I'm a visual person. I see what I play, what I write. I right. want to visually like try to present that to people. But yeah. yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, like Operation Pegasus is just, at least I would like to look at it now, like the epitome the epitome yeah of what Deschel is yeah you know and can be more like the middle ground like boom there's Deschel now where are they gonna go we finally found and honed in that Deschel sound right no doubt about it this is one of the best albums they've done it's just banger after banger like that's yeah. what it is just a staple this is Deschel finally once and for all and then moving forward let's see where it you know it grows absolutely and I, I think it's cool to see like how hard you've had to work you know in more recent years I'd say the, about the past five as an independent artist that, you know, you do have some people, it's a much smaller concentrated pool of people, but at least you know for a fact those people that are actively investing in you, um, however that looks for this record, for you as a person, as an artist, um, that they legitimately care. That yes. they are actually in your corner to see you succeed, not only as Shell, but just as a person that yeah. cares about what he does mm -hmm. as it relates to music. Agreed. The thing about Shell is it's very um, pure. Yeah, I think that's what makes Deschel Deschel, and I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to make it impure. You know, the, you the thing with Deschel, Deschel, I've always wrote music, right? I've always wrote these songs, and I took them into a studio. Labels never said, uh, you know, you need to write a pop song, you need to do this, you need to do that. And when they did, we'd shut it down. So that's where, like, I'm just stubborn with that because I can still write good music and it still be the style of music that I want. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna become somebody that I'm not just to pay the bills. I understand what that means. I understand the concept of selling out is when you're like a metal band and you're like not making money and you're like, we need to make money. The label wants us to make money. So we're gonna write a pop song and be mainstream now. And then you sold out. But is that really bad? Not really. I mean, yeah. one, one way you can look at it is like, yeah, they sold out and that sucks because you love them for the sound that they had and now it's completely different. But they're doing what they can to survive. Uh, now, I can totally do that. I could probably get in a situation where I could sing for another band right. and get success out of that, but at what cost? Right. Money holds no value. The biggest currency for me is just the gratitude of, to be able to do what I love to do. Now, yeah. when you take that away from me, you give me a million dollars, Sure, I can go buy a bunch of guitars and like the cool shit I've always wanted to buy in my life, but I can't write the music I want to write with those instruments now. So now I'm a phony. Now I'm the facade of who I used to be and I can't sell out in that, that way. That doesn't mean I won't have fun and explore that kind of world, but I wouldn't do that for Deshell. You know, that's something I'd do on the side, maybe make some money, but Deshell is pure. It's untouched. It will never be touched. And the fact that it's now completely independent, it just makes it more special to me. You know, that's not to say people aren't having a hand in helping me formulate these songs the best they can and maybe even co-write a little part right here and there. That's not taking away from the sound. They're just adding and helping me. They're enhancing yeah, it. Yeah, they're enhancing it. We're not shifting the sound. So yeah, you know, I think Deshell is a pure band and needs to stay pure. And I think the audience that does the, the ride or dies, like they know. That's why yeah. they like Deshell. They're like, he's not going to give up on what he believes in. You know, he's just going to keep writing sick music that he loves to write and with, you can't say anything. But, you know, to a degree, I've had this conversation, to a degree, the way that I write is kind of dictated by my fans' reactions. Like, if I hear them really liking certain type of style a little bit more, I kind of get this little itch in me to go, I need, I need that fix. I want them to like it again. So I'll yeah. write a heavy song to see how they get them reacting. And, you know, it's kind of fun because... I don't look at it as me selling out or appeasing my fans. 
I like, obviously I wrote this song that they liked so much, yeah. right? So I like that music. So there's no problem with me writing another song in that world of heaviness or softness or this. Like, it's just all fun to me as long as I can still write the music and it's not being written for me, you know? Any final words, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with your fans that you'd like to just say anything at all? Well, if you're new to Day Shell, just know that I'm the real deal. You know, I'm the guy that really, really does care about music probably more than anybody I've ever met. And not just in the sense about just music, about the actual art and craft of creating it. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm just a real one, you know, in that, in that regards. And if you like, you like that mentality and you like what you hear, you know, stick behind this because I ain't stopping anytime soon. You know, we got a ride or die fan base. I'm so thankful, so lucky to actually still be here and, you know, do this because this is not easy for majority of the world. Right. Yeah, you know, I love my fans. I appreciate them. Everyone that has donated so far to the campaign. Thank you guys so much. We got a long ways to go. We're almost halfway there, but you know, just keep spreading it. We're going to do it. We're going to make a sick album no matter what. And, and you're going to be, you'll be around too. You'll Absolutely. see a lot of it. You'll hear a lot of it before then. Absolutely. And I'll, <laughs> I'll be uh, basking in the honor. <laughs> yeah. No, but honestly, thank you so much, Shay. Thank you for your time. You know, honestly, beyond the undertake of this fourth record, just, you know, friend to friend, brother to brother, um, who have this commonality of caring about their art and their work. Like, I'm proud of you. And I'm honestly stoked to see what comes out of this. You know, again, Mr. Payne served as like a testament to the fact that you can do it. Yeah. That you can actually do it as a one man band, as an independent artist. And like you've said before, I believe Pegasus will serve as the arrival of who you are as a musician in that you've been stretched beyond your limits and you still manage to deliver. Yeah. And I think that's what people, I hope that's what people hear and realize when they hear this record, when they consider donating to the campaign, understanding the weight that that takes off your shoulders. Like every dollar goes a long way in relieving that weight off of you that you're able to just enjoy the process. Yes. You're able to enjoy making the music. That's the biggest thing. If we can get that 50K, I will enjoy my time. If we don't, it's going to be a lot of weight yeah. on my brain. And I want to stay creative, but we'll yeah. still make it work because that's what I do. Yeah. I just don't give up. Well, and I know if there's one thing I learned about you from the get-go is once you set your mind to something, you don't stop I until don't. it's achieved. It has so, to happen. So yeah, bro. Well, to that, <laughs> I'll drink to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course, bro.